Greetings Hobbyists, this is Art Sans of Vool, and in this video we're going to be creating a banner. So the idea of this is that these techniques could be used to create any loose hanging fabric or flag, but we're going to be doing this using some simple sculpting technique, as opposed to using anything like the physics that's included in Blender. Now if you do want to do this using physics, then there is a video on that, I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. And in actual fact, you could use these two tools combined as what we're going to be doing in this video gives you vastly more control over what you're going to end up with as a result. So I've got this banner pole here in the background and I'm going to be using this to model around because obviously we want to connect our banner or flag to something. You might have something that's going to look different to this, but the process is going to be the same. And that process is made up of six stages. So we're going to go through these one at a time. And one of them in particular, I'm going to explain in some depth because I think it's important that you understand it because it's going to be using a tool that is really, really handy, but a lot of people seem to not know how to control it and therefore seem to palm it off as not being really useful. So what I'm going to do is shift A, mesh and bring in a plane. And this is going to be my banner. Now at the moment it's only two millimeters wide. If you haven't got this, just make sure you click the box in the bottom left hand corner to be larger. And I know I want mine to be about 30 millimeters wide and then I want it to be 50 in the Z axis. So I'm just gonna R and then X and then 90 and then Control and A and apply the rotation. Then I'm gonna scale this. So I'm gonna come into my item menu up here and then go to Z and I want to increase this to 50. And then because I've increased this, it's messed up the scale. So I'm going to control an A and apply the scale. Then I can just G and Z this up to approximately where I want it to be. So we're going to go with somewhere about there. And that looks perfectly fine for now. Now at this point, what I'm also going to do is name this. So we're going to call this banner A because you might have multiple banners going on. And depending on what you decide to do with this and how far you go with this, having this is going to be really useful. Now I'm actually going to G and X this to the side and then shift and D and then X a copy back. And that's going to be so that I have a blank copy of this banner at this point. And there are reasons for this that we'll talk about at the end. But for now, I'm just going to hide this. I don't really need it. Now in this next stage, we're going to need to start subdividing this up. And we want to, first of all, make this into perfect squares or at least as close to perfect as you can get. Now this is easy for me because I know this was 30 wide at the top. So I'm just going to control an R, scroll up, click and then right click. And then we've got this divided into three and then control an R at the side, scroll up. So I'm dividing this into five, click, right click. And I know these are going to be squares because this was 30 by 50. As I said, this doesn't have to be perfectly square for you, but the closer you can get to this being perfect, the more useful it's going to be for certain functions and things you can do with this. Then we're going to press A and I'm going to subdivide this further. So I'm going to control an E and then subdivide and I'm going to probably go up to about two. Now importantly, I've not subdivided this too much and this is going to be really important for a control on the sculpting tool that we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is shift and D X and bring that across and then we'll go into edge mode and then I'm going to control an E and I'm going to subdivide this one more time. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing, Shift and D, X, and then go into Edge Mode, Control and E, and then subdivide this again. So we've now got three levels of subdivision that's going to help demonstrate the point that I'm trying to make. Because the tool we're going to use is the Cloth Sculpting tool, and a lot of people seem to avoid this, and I think it's mostly because they don't understand why it's not working for them. So let's go into our next stage of sculpting the major folds, and we can start to understand this brush. So I'm going to go into object mode and just select this and then tab and go into sculpt mode. If you don't have this tool because you're not using machine tools, you can just click up here and go into sculpt mode that way. So what I'm going to do is drag this out and I'm going to go down to my cloth brush. And importantly, I'm going to come over to my tool menu here, scroll down and where it says deformation, we want to change this from drag to grab. Now there's a grab brush over here but these work in different ways. This just grabs and pulls the mesh, whereas in the cloth brush, this grab version will actually treat this like it's cloth. So let's just demonstrate what we're doing and then we'll talk about what we're actually gonna do. So don't follow this along at this point, just make sure you're understanding how this brush works. So the major controls that we've got is if we press F, we can change the size of our brush and that's gonna control how much of the mesh is being affected. So I want it somewhere quite large at this point. Our next two controls are going to be the density of the mesh that we're going on to, effectively how small those squares are. 
And then the final is how far we pull down. So if I just click here and then drag, you can see that we're starting to fold up our object. Now I'm not gonna worry about the fact that the pole is showing through. I can always get rid of that later, but you can see that we end up with some rather large folds in our mesh. And we're getting that because these squares are quite large. It creates large width folds. Now if I just come into this one and Alt and Q, we'll move on to sculpting this object. And if I do exactly the same thing, I haven't changed any of my brush settings and drag down, you can see that we get a lot smaller folds because the squares are smaller. So the width of each fold is smaller. And then if I do the same thing here, we're gonna end up with really small wrinkles and folds. Now what this means is the size of the mesh that we're sculpting onto plays a really important role in the width of our folds. Now if I go into object mode and just select those and press control and three so we can smooth this out, you can see that while it looks pixelated at the point where we're doing this, we can very quickly change that and it's gonna look really nice but the size of the different folds you've got are gonna be completely different. And that's where I think a lot of people go wrong. They have this really highly subdivided mesh, maybe even more so than this, and it starts creating these really, really tiny wrinkles, and that's not the effect they want. So what I'm gonna do is just undo all of that, delete these two objects out, and we're gonna start with our larger squares, and then gradually we're going to get finer and finer on the squares so that we start doing our large folds and then we start doing the smaller folds within that. Now before I do that, it's gonna be really important if I come to sculpt mode to make sure that this top bit, which is going to be attached to my pole, doesn't move because this is where I want to keep it well attached so it shouldn't be dragged down. So I'm gonna scroll down to my mask brush. I'm gonna put this strength up to one because we want everything to be fully masked. And I'm just gonna make sure I mask this top edge. In fact, my brush is probably a little bit big for this but that's fine. So let's just F to bring that down. We'll do the same thing over there as well. And if I want to get rid of any of my masking, I can just hold down control and click, and then it will just get rid of those at that point. So we're gonna go something there, something there, should be fine. Then I can come back into my cloth brush. That's F to make this larger, and then I'm going to bring down these folds. So let's go somewhere like there and I want this bit dragged out so it's being caught in the wind. And let's make sure it's not going through the flagpole at any point. So something like this. There we go, I think that's what I want. So we've got these nice large fold shapes that we're gonna be able to manipulate a little bit more in a second. Now, importantly, the cloth brush is gonna keep this all squared off. And what I mean by that is these squares remain relatively square in shape, which is quite important if you're gonna be doing things like adding additional objects on top of this. Whereas if I use the standard grab brush and start selecting this, you'll notice I can stretch these out to the point where they're really elongated. Whereas the cloth brush won't ever let me do that. It will just tighten it and then won't let me go any further. It will drag everything else with it. Let's undo those. So this is really important that we have this level of control. Okay, now at this point we want to change the size of the folds that we are sculpting. I want to get a little bit smaller. Now we can do that by just subdividing it, except for now that we're in sculpt mode, if I press control and one, we are gonna subdivide it, but instead of adding a subdivision, it adds a multi-resolution modifier, which is really nice for sculpting with you can change the levels backwards and forwards as opposed to being stuck at one sort of level, which is really cool. I think explaining the multi-resolution modifier is kind of a whole video on its own, so I'm not gonna try and explain that here. But you can see these large folds look really nice. They look really interesting, but we've been able to control them more than we would do using physics. The only issue is we've got these curved off edges that we definitely don't want. So what I'm gonna do is come into edge mode, and then I'm just gonna select these edges around the outside using Alt, Shift and clicking. And I'm gonna press Shift and E and drag to the side. And that's gonna put on, if I click off, this line. Mine's purple, I'm not sure if yours will be purple. I can't remember if I changed that, but that is an edge crease. And if I just select those edges again and go into item, you can see we've got a mean crease here of one. And what that means is when I go back into sculpt mode, 
it has nicely controlled the points of these corners. Now at this point, I think I want to add some more finer folds. And if I just scale my brush down a bit, because we've made this a little finer, we can now add in finer folds. So if I click here and drag down, it will start doing smaller folds. In fact, I think I want to go further. So I'm gonna press Control and two, and then do the same thing. And you can see these folds are much finer. Also note that as you scroll around, you sort of see the level before, so you can get an idea of both. So let's just drag down there, and then maybe a bit here. Maybe some of that back a bit. I want that one coming in front. So I can control this really nicely and put all my folds where I want them to be. And any bits here, for example, I think there might be some small folds here. I can put those in place by just dragging everything across. So we're getting these smaller, more defined folds. Let's just do something there as well. And once again, if I really wanted to, I could go up. So let's control and three or control four. And we can see where we're getting these small folds coming in. And I could come in and add some really, really fine ones somewhere like there and then there, where it's connecting to the point where it's being held in place by the parts that will connect to the banner pole. And we get those really small folds there. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do is actually go to the next stage of connecting our flag to the pole. So what we're gonna do is go back into object mode and let's start placing this. Let's just up our view level to four so it's the same. You'll notice that you can keep this really low, which is very nice because you can just see the basics of what you've got or scroll it up to that high level of detail that we had brought in earlier with the higher folds. So this level view is really, really handy. So let's have a look at where we are. I think this needs to G and then come to about there. Look at that. We can sort out where it's going through the pole in a second. So let's go with about there at this point. Yeah, I think that will do. And then I'm gonna go into edge mode and we're gonna connect this to our pole. So what I'm gonna do is select those edges that are here and importantly, we're gonna get rid of the mean crease that's showing. Now, the reason for that is if we don't, it's gonna keep adding a crease as we go around and we don't want that on all of our individual points. So let's, in fact, let's just do this in two bits. So I'll do this correctly here. So I'll put that as zero. And we'll also notice there's now no crease. Select those and then I'm just going to E to extrude those. And I'm gonna roughly take this around that pole to somewhere about, actually let's go to there at this point. Then I'm gonna select all the edges that are on the outside. So here, notice that we've left that one there. And then I'm gonna shift an E and crease those. Or again, I could have done this over here. Now let's just do this one wrong. So I haven't taken away the mean crease here. And you'll notice that if I then E and extrude this up, that we end up with these creased edges all the way along, which is really tedious. I mean, we can just select them all and then bring that mean crease down to zero. It just takes a little bit longer. So up to you which way you go. Neither one causes a huge problem. So let's just select those, shift and E and drag that. And we can go into object mode and we can see we've got this going on. So now I can come in and I'm just going to get rid of my mask. So let's Alt and M, which will unmask everything. And if I want to, we could add in our final few folds just on this edge. In fact, let's bring this down a few levels so that those folds aren't too large. There we go. And back up to four. And I think you'll agree that's looking pretty nice in terms of our detailing. Final thing, I'm actually gonna come down again two levels and then just drag that out so that it's not touching our pole and then same there. Then at this point we can start coming in and use some actual sculpting. So for this I'm just gonna be using a tablet from Huion. It's the Canvas 22 Pro, really, really nice. It's my Christmas gift to myself because I really want to learn sculpting in this year. It's sort of one of my New Year's resolutions. But you could do this without it. And we're just gonna use some of these standard brushes to come in and maybe have a look at some of these areas where we like the folds, but we might want to change them. For example, that I think I could do with smoothing out. I don't like those little wrinkles. Let's have a look at these. That one, I'm not so sure about the wrinkle being that large. 
and then maybe some of these I can define a little bit more. I'd quite like this wrinkle sort of to extend up here. So I'm going to use the draw brush. Let's change the brush size on that to be much smaller. And then we can come in and have a look and then maybe change that over here as well and have that going up to there. In fact, maybe that's a little bit too far. Let's go somewhere to about there. And then we can do the similar thing over here. Let's again make that brush size really small and just continue that one up and maybe add this one which is going to flow into this down there and then it's just a matter of going around and seeing what you want to change let's have that come in and go up there i'm just going to smooth that out a little bit as well so this just allows us to change all these little parts that we might want to be just a little bit more defined in some way is there anything else that i want let's have a look around here no i'm actually really happy with that i think i might bring this in slightly but all the while that I'm doing this I'm making sure that I'm not going to affect any of these squares by doing any really big crazy changes especially using things as I mentioned like the drag brush so most of this I'm affecting at the top just because I want to really pay attention to the detail being there whereas at the bottom I want this being relatively smooth this might be a little bit much so let's actually smooth that out slightly because anything too extreme is going to cause problems if we want to add detailing in later. Somewhere around there looks about good. Cool. I think that's pretty much about right. Let's just go to there. And then all I'm going to do is just potentially smooth out some of this. And then we can use the grab brush just lightly to bring these just slightly outside of our pole so that we can add some thickness to these when we need to. Looks about right. Yep, I think that's okay. And then same thing over here. Cool. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy with that. This could do with coming a little bit further away. And so could this. So there we go. We've got the basics of our banner. And as I said, I've not really done much here. Pretty much the cloth brush has done this all for us. It's just a matter of accentuating what we want to accentuate. Yeah, I think we'll leave that there. So hopefully my head didn't get in the way too much there. I actually ordered something better to hold my camera because I really do want to show some more sculpting on the channel. It's, as I said, something that I really want to try and improve upon. Finally, when you're happy with your banner, we just need to go on to the final stage and that is to add some thickness, or at least if you want to 3D print it, that's gonna be a good idea. So we're gonna go back into object mode and all we're gonna do, let's minimize that, is add in a solidify modifier. Up that to whatever you want the thickness to be. I'm going to go for about one millimeter and then we can just have a look at this. Now I've got mine going around here which I'm perfectly happy with. If you want to take it further so you want to have this wrapped all the way around you could do all you need to do is go into edge mode and just extrude those out a little bit further. So there we go that is our banner. We can still come in and modify this for example I could up this to five and you can see we've got a really nice level of detail on this, some really interesting folds, and it's gonna print really nicely, and a slight little bit of overlap here with our banner pole, which is actually really good because it means that you're going to have some additional rigidity for this, what would be otherwise a relatively thin pole. Now the final thing that I'm gonna mention is the banner that we left here, the original. So what did I leave that? Well, that's actually gonna be something that I'm gonna use in a tutorial next week where we're gonna take our banner and we're gonna add a load of detail on it. For example, this icon, which you made in a previous video, text and this outlining here. And this is really, really easy to do. So if you are interested in that and you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you know when this comes out. And if you really can't wait, over on the Patreon for $3, you get these videos a week ahead of time, which means that detailing video is already available and you help support the channel and get other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.